unless you were living under a rock, you know that X-Men Apocalypse came out just last week. So this is time for our X-Men Apocalypse review. Yay! Yay! And uh, yeah, so let's just jump right into things. I like to break things down in several different categories, acting, directing, plot action and then give you my overall thoughts on the movie so let's just kick it off with acting overall it was good i mean the main actors you knew you were going to get a good job from them james mcavoy uh you know jennifer lawrence and michael fassbender all top tier uh we had a newcomer with Isaac, Isaac, uh, oscar isaac as apocalypse he was good but i'll get into that a little bit later um and then you had the kids the new cast and that's really where i was worried that the acting would really fall off and it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. You had, um, see, I don't know her name in real life, but you had Sansa from, <laughs> I think it's actually Sophie Turner. Sansa from Game of Thrones. She played Jean Grey. You had a new Scott Summers. You had a uh, new Storm. You have a new Angel. You have a new Nightcrawler. So you got a lot of our old classic favorite characters just with new actors and younger. So overall, good job acting. Kept me into the, you know, immersed in the environment didn't feel like at any point that it was like, oh my God, that's horrible. That's not how somebody in real life would ever say anything. So, you know, very well done. Now it is a Brian Singer directed movie, so you expect that to be top tier. So let's just jump right into directing. Um, the movie flowed pretty good. Action was very good. I really enjoyed the action set pieces. Some of them felt really cool. You know, every superhero really got to use their powers. And that's really what you want to see in these movies. Just <laughs> yeah, like Transformers. Then it'd be like, why are they here? If yeah exactly and, and you know not all the time do you get a lot of action and a lot of them using their powers and it felt like they gave you enough of that one thing i will say about the directing is it almost feels like they could have cut out mm, about 30 minutes out of this movie to be honest with you and you really that's, wouldn't miss much that's deep. now i'm not saying that it felt like it was 30 minutes too long because i like a lot of the backstory and the the, the exposition and you know the, the dialogue back and forth but really if they wanted to they totally could have cut out about half hour you know what, though? If you didn't feel like it was too long, I'd prefer it to be that extra half hour because when I go to see a movie, I want to get my you know movie money's worth. Yeah, oh, I agree. Like I said, I agree, but for not everybody's like that. Some people want don't want to sit there for that long. They just want boom, 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 out. And I kind of like it a little more drawn out. We are fans of the more the fantasy type things. I was a big RPG game yeah. player when I was younger because I enjoy the drawn out story. I enjoy the character development. Um and then that brings me to character development. That's part of the directing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some characters develop more than others. It, it, there wasn't really much happening. I want to say that the big thing that they left out of this movie and something that Brian Singer did very well in number two was the interaction between Charles Xavier and uh, Magneto. Didn't really have much between those two. So that really is the core that I center this whole the reboot, if you want to call it, the first class series of X-Men movies, which this was supposed to be the third one to kind of tie it all together. But again, we'll get into that in a little bit. I, so, I would honestly say that uh, the that's the most interesting part, or I maybe not the most interesting, but, but definitely up there part of the entire X-Men franchise. True. The dynamic between Xavier and, and... Yeah, and they set it up, I thought they set it up really well in the very first X-Men movie. They did uh, a spectacular job, and they Magneto. went over the top and kept it cemented in the second movie because mm -hmm. they showed, like, the past versions of them and the future versions of them and how the future versions have come back together. The past was still kind of splintered. So, And honestly, that's one of the things that uh, that really detracted from... The, I mean, there's plenty of things that detracted from the third, but you also did have that dynamic, and then Last after game. that, they fixed it. Yeah, and they they killed off Xavier, there. like, in the first few minutes of the movie. That was just crazy. We're they, not going to get into X-Men. in the second movie, I think. Now, I, I, no, they killed him off in the third. Jean Grey evaporates him when she goes Dark Phoenix. Okay. Either way, it was not there. Yeah. And that's what yeah. you need in the X-Men movies. You need it's, it's that Xavier Magneto. That's, yeah, exactly. That's that's the core of the story that really pushes everything forward. Uh, so, yeah, generally it was pretty good. Felt, you know, felt like they could have cut some out if they wanted to. Um, now on to the plot. It's a great X-Men story. I mean, everybody likes Apocalypse. He's one of the best villains out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the story, I really have no problem with the plot. There's a couple execution things that I, I told you about in directing. Um, but I do appreciate that they're reintroducing a lot of our favorite X-Men, the Jean Greys, the Cyclops, Nightcrawlers, that it all had something horrible happen to them. Jean Grey got killed in X-Men 3. Cyclops did. You know, Everybody just randomly died in X-Men 3. 
and they didn't do that in this one so that was nice and they introduced these characters and they they kind of set up a little bit more um for movies to come but overall it was a good plot apocalypse comes back wants to kill all humans and only let the mutants live that's just a standard apocalypse plot line and so it, it worked well it, you know it was a good plot intriguing execution had a little bit to be desired like i said with the directing but overall pretty good did nightcrawler then, live up to the old nightcrawler not to mention mm, they didn't have enough of this nightcrawler because hmm. in x-men 2 the best scene of that movie was the very first scene where nightcrawler's zipping through the white house i mean nightcrawler they didn't quite give him a fair part of that movie in general he's also one of my that's favorite my favorite X-Men, part of so. all the x-men movies ever so yeah I, I, I just absolutely love that part now he did have some good action pieces which we'll just get into right now so action lots and lots of mutants using their abilities so that's a good time they had uh when they found nightcrawler they had him zipping all over the place uh they have angel he was a, a brawler which totally changed the story of angel but okay whatever um when psylocke would come into it she was pretty good at fighting which was very interesting because i want to say olivia munn she uh, i don't want to say i know she's psylocke in this movie she literally had about four lines hmm. and most of them were like three word lines and i was like you know what she's not a very good actress anyway so good job brian singer cut her lines down to a minimum really wasn't me but psylocke is a really cool character i'm glad they introduced her uh but yeah so the action lots and lots of fun action lots of fight scenes one of the the end fight scenes seemed to go on for about 20 30 minutes so that's a pretty long fight scene now there's break up a little bit of dialogue here and there but there's a lot of action going on in this movie so you know what i mean you know you, you have to have a lot of action in these movies now one note i do have here is that apocalypse it just seemed like he could do whatever he wanted sometimes whenever he wanted to do it. Like at the very end, spoiler alert, he's fighting off literally everybody in the movie and he just seems to be doing it. So like he can literally fight off Charles in mind palace. He can fight off everybody on the outside world. He can just do whatever he wants. It seems like, and they didn't really define his powers. So it kind of seemed unreasonable that he, at least the plot again, spoilers that he needed the force horse four horsemen like he did because it seemed like they were more integral to his plan almost than he was totally like he could get some of the stuff done but he needed their special abilities to really bring his plan to fruition well, which was kind of himself, right so. yeah but so action very fun now i will say this before i get into my overall i have been judging this movie strictly off of seeing captain america 3 not too long ago and Captain America 3 was one of the best superhero movies of all time, if not the best of all time. It was an amazing movie. And even take it out of the superhero movie realm, it was just a great movie in general. So this is not Captain America 3. I'll just say that right there. So let's jump into my overall score. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. So a good rating, solid that's, rating. That's harsher than I expected, though. Yeah, honest. I think I gave Captain America 4.5 or a 5. Uh, if I didn't give it a five, I should have given it a five. But, you know, it's it, it's one, it, it was really good. And I kind of feel like I am kind of judging it off of what happened with Captain America. But I think also, if you look at the movie, they kind of explain it the best. So there's a scene, now this is set in 1983. There's a scene, Nightcrawler first gets to the Xavier School for the Gifted. And him, Cyclops, Gene, and I want to say it's Jubilee are sitting around talking and scott says something about a mall and nightcrawler goes what's a mall i've never been to a mall and so they say okay you're going to the mall with us we're going to the mall so when they show him coming out of the mall they actually show him coming out of a movie theater and they just came out of return of the jedi and gene gray and scott kind of have this little back and forth where it's like oh that was good but the second one's better yeah the second one's always better the third one usually aren't aren't nearly as good <laughs> and if you think about it that explains X-Men The Last Stand, which Brian Singer didn't have anything to do with, unfortunately. And that also kind of talks about this movie. Because Days of Future Past, way better than this one. Oh, really? That's like a 4.5 out of 5. So, hmm. so, but my overall, it's a fun, enjoyable movie. Kept me entertained throughout, um, but didn't feel quite as epic as it could. And I will point this sign, one sign, if I could say why it didn't feel so epic, is because Apocalypse did not seem to be the evil mastermind that he is in the comics. They didn't have the polarizing bad guy. Because, yeah, he was bad. He did some bad things. But you, he didn't do anything so evil that you're just like, oh, I hate that guy. You know, like, he didn't 
he killed people yes and he shows he, he, they pretty much show like hey he's destroying all the major cities in the world but it feels detached you know it doesn't feel like it almost feels like the cities are empty while he's destroying it so he's not killing anybody like hmm. he does even have one scene where he's going to get Magneto and there's a room full of people and he just like waves his hands and they all die. And you're just like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> he just killed a room full of people. Good for him. But he, he didn't never, care, he never kill really anyone has... he cared about. <clears throat> exactly. And that was one thing I think could have made the movie better is have him kill off one of the main characters midway or early on in the movie. And then you turn him evil. Then you, cause you got a good performance out of us, Oscar Isaac. But most of the time you see Apocalypse in the movie, he's recruiting his four horsemen. So he's not trying to be like outwardly evil. He's just trying to be manipulative. So yeah. as opposed to what they did with the um, the uh, last couple X-Men movies where you could have, um, or at least like in a first class where you have the Nazis, which already you don't like the Nazis, but you have the one Nazi Nazis. that kills not, Magneto's mother. Not, so You don't have Nazis in first class. Oh, you do. You actually yeah. you do. That wasn't first class. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, he and became then, the main bad guy. Yeah, yeah and that's then right. uh, Magneto goes Magneto. off and kills a bunch more Nazis. Well, and, and then in X-Men Days of Future Past, you had Trask, who was who who they showed, oh, he's been experimenting on mutants. He's been killing them by experimenting mm -hmm. on them, and he's very cold towards them. So it's like, okay, polarizing villain, right? There you go. This one, yes, Apocalypse is bad. Yeah, you don't want him to succeed, but you don't really feel that, that hate towards him. So, like I said, overall, 3.5 out of 5. If you are a huge X-Men fan, there's plenty there. It's pretty much a setup for the Dark Phoenix saga, guaranteed. Guaranteed. They like they they showed too many hints of the Phoenix Force, and maybe they won't go straight into Dark Phoenix, which I hope they don't, because the Phoenix Force built up for a while before it went Dark Phoenix. So well, it sounds like if they haven't hit Phoenix yet, they're doing better than the first time yeah. around with yeah, with Phoenix. So. They're probably a little bit uh, edgy about about jumping into Phoenix because of how poorly three did, but. Well, but it was just such a horrible movie, though. Three was just garbage. Garbage. So, but yeah. So, overall, 3.5 out of 5. But hit us up. Let us know what you think. Do you agree with my assessment? Or do you think it was better or worse? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Google Facebook. Always good ways getting a hold of us.